how does a natural man become a carnal man i have taught you endlessly here but it is part of how we build people by repetition you transit from being a natural man to being a believer in fact by encountering jesus i need to drum this in your heart reading the bible does not automatically make you saved it is important reading the bible and praying does not turn you from an unsaved person to a saved person it could make you a believer a believer in scriptural principles even a believer in jesus but not unto salvation you don't have to be saved to be a believer you can start being a believer before you are saved but you still need to be saved everybody jesus healed had to believe him to be healed so you can call them believers but there, there is believing that is unto salvation and that happens when you acknowledge the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. Are we together? You have to acknowledge the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. Believing that he died for your sin. Believing that he rose again by the glory of the Father. Believing that on confessing his lordship over your life you receive like we have taught here number one the forgiveness of sin number two you receive the gift of righteousness and three you receive the life of god are we learning now and then you become a believer and i have taught you let me repeat it again so that you will never forget that the moment you get saved please use this and help anybody you know the moment any believer gets saved if they ever ask you what is next this is the answer i'm giving to you the moment a believer gets saved the next thing is to encounter this threefold ministry that begins the journey of his transformation number one the ministry of the holy spirit never forget this i like you to listen as if you are preparing for an exam because you really are if you find anyone who gets born again or you get anyone get you know born again and the person says okay now i am saved what next i'm giving you that answer the next thing that person needs is to be introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit number two that person needs to be introduced to the ministry of the word number three that person needs to be introduced to the ministry of the teaching priest a man of god a church a congregation where he would find an opportunity to hear the word and to grow these three ministries work together the teaching priest the word of god the holy spirit working in synergy to build that naive believer genuinely saved a genuine possessor of eternal life but cannot manifest the riches that are embedded in that life because i have taught you that releasing the riches that come with this zoe life is knowledge dependent knowledge dependent so to the degree to which you grow in knowledge that is the degree to which the reality of eternal life flows like a river out of you so you can be saved and get to a point where you doubt your own salvation Am I really saved? Because nothing is changing in my life. And some of you are like that. In fact, that's what brought you here. You are saying, Apostle, I don't know if this is my Christianity. Maybe Jesus picked me out separately and said he doesn't want to save me. You are genuinely saved. But what you do not know is that the riches, all of the riches that are in this eternal life is not just released because you are saved it is at the instance of knowledge you need to know how it's like opening the channel for a river to begin to flow and find expression so many believers who are saved may never have an opportunity to experience the victorious life to experience ever increasing glory to get to a realm of power to become witnesses indeed and in experience and the missing link is not their salvation at all is that for some reason some of them never had the opportunity like the believers in acts chapter 19 from verse 1 to 4 the bible says paul haven't passed through the upper coast he came and he met certain brethren there disciples they were under a mentor they were saved and he said to them number verse 2 he says have ye received the holy ghost since he believed so they were believers they were saved they were not natural people in fact they had submitted to discipleship the trouble was the teaching priest the individual who was mentoring them was limited himself 
he was not a bad person but he was limited and he only taught them from the residue of his limitation have you received the holy ghost since you believed and they said unto him we have not so much heard can you imagine this we have not so much heard whether there be any holy ghost any holy ghost any holy ghost verse 3 paul was surprised he said unto what then were you baptized for god's sake and they said unto john's baptism paul now began to give them a sound exegesis the progression that from repentance it does not stop there are we together now that the baptism of john is not a waste he was telling them that you should, but that it was an usher to help you believe on he who should come that is on jesus christ verse 5 the bible says when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus verse 6 and paul laid his hands on them they were saved already but there was no possibility for these people to become spiritual men because they had violated the pathway that leads to grace and glory and paul came to them laid hands on them that they may receive the holy ghost the holy ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesy how many believers today get saved and quite honestly I just want to stay here for a minute they don't even know what to do with their Christian life and so we tell them okay find a Bible believing church and that is wonderful and do you know I've told you in Koinonia one of the greatest blessings you can give any new convert is to take the person to the right spiritual family it is a great blessing a believer's life can literally become stunted to defeat, stunted to failure, even stunted to death. Not necessarily because he was not saved, but that he did not have an opportunity to sit under a spiritual family that will feed him with truth. Truth that makes for growth. Like a baby born already. So that baby is already alive. But the baby can be so malnourished, it can lead to ill health, it can stunt the baby's growth and it can even kill the baby. We invest billions of dollars world over today trying to help manage the issue of malnutrition of children. The way we do it in our world today is how it is in the realm of the spirit. There are many believers who cannot attain onto that stature of spiritual men because they do not have the kind of people. Are you seeing why it is important that God will help us men of God to keep raising others? The more they are matured spiritual people, the more they can help spread this campaign of producing maturity out of ordinary believers. For as long as we just have one, two, three, four, five men of God, there's only so much you can do. We only have 24 hours. So the more spiritual men are raised, the greater it is for the program of God. Are we together now? There are meetings today with all humility. I may not be able to attend, either because of my schedule or because of whatever it is, but the believers there, they need to hear the word of God. And so if a territory just depends on only Joshua Selman, you see that the program of God is in trouble. That means God must raise people so that as he's promoting you, the realm you are living, somebody must occupy that place too. Are we together now? Once upon a time, there are places we go to now and there are meetings that God is granting us grace to be able to host. We couldn't have done that. It was the Reinhard Bonkers and the rest now. We were in our yesterday's version, doing what God was doing. But as we step, we must make sure that that space is not left empty. But the things that thou hast received of me, it says, commit thou to faithful men who will commit it to others too. That means there should be a lot of spiritual men who can help students in secondary school, help students in the university and colleges, help students in, for, for want of word, what you will call small churches around the villages or countryside. A time can come where because of your schedules and quite honestly, because of how God has lifted you, it may not be easy to go back to some of these platforms. But if you do not raise men, then God's program becomes affected. Are we together now? Yeah. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. 
Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up, even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily, remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter four verses six to seven tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward, through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.